Today, I'm going to explain why if you deal with commodities and you care about your PNL, you shouldn't trust any trade credit insurance. Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Daniel, a former commodity trader that had a lot of experiences when it comes to uh, credit insurance. And if you already know this channel, please bear with me because uh, this video is going to be a bit more advanced than the usual stuff that I shoot for YouTube. Stick with me because I'm going to explain what a credit insurance is, its price, and then I'm going to reveal the traps that I fell into when it comes to credit insurance. Because like any good insurances, you know, their goal is not to protect you, but to find ways not to pay you if you need them. And to be honest, back then I was a complete dumbass uh, and I didn't completely understand the extent of the insurance policy, let's say. So please don't make the same mistake as I did. Watch this video. So what is a trade credit insurance or credit insurance? So let's start to see what Investopedia has to say because usually this is a good place to start. Trade credit insurance is a method for protecting a business against its commercial customer's inability to pay for products or services whether because of bankruptcy, insolvency, or political upheaval in countries where the trade partner operates. Not bad, not bad, but let's give it a little bit more context. So let's say that you are a Apple exporter out of Poland and that you sell your cargo in Italy, Dubai, Brazil, Malaysia and so on. As the value of a container of Apple is quite low, it makes no sense to use expensive payment term methods such as a letter of credit. And also let's say that you are a well capitalized company and you don't mind giving 90 days for your customer to pay for your cargo but you still want to have some kind of protection if one of your customer doesn't pay his invoice. Because as a Polish based company, you are not going to take legal action internationally for an invoice of 20,000 US dollars. It makes no sense. The cost of recovering this money is way too expensive compared to what you're gonna get. So in that case, credit insurance is the right tool. If a buyer's default, then you get compensated. Credit insurance is a tool to manage your risk. It's only a tool. And never forget that it doesn't de-risk your counterparty risk, but only your credit risk. It's not cheap. As a commodity trader, usually your margin are between 0.5 to 5%. Uh, but of course, it depends a lot on the type of commodity, the payment term, the risk, and so on. Here, the price of uh, trade credit insurance also varies a lot depending on the location and so on. But usually, it's between 0.2 to 1% of the value of the invoice. So you can imagine that for a commodity trading business, it's extremely expensive. It could eat half of your margin. They can stop covering any company at any time. So, so let me give you an example. Let's say that you've been speaking with a potential new customer. You ask your credit insurance to see if you could get a line on him. And let's say that the credit insurance give you 100K. So that means that in case of default, the credit insurance will pay you up to 100,000 US dollars. So you are like, yeah, great, I have a new customer. So you make a deal with this company, you organize a shipment of a bunch of containers and life goes on. Then it's Friday, you are going to leave the office, you know that uh, the containers are going to be loaded on a vessel on Saturday. Everything went well and you go off on your weekend. On Monday, you check back at the office and you don't, you don't know why, but you want just to check a little bit your spam box because it's been a while that you haven't uh, seen what was inside. And here, you see that you have missed a really important email automatically generated from your credit insurer. This is why it went directly into your spam box. But actually, the email says that this new customer, his company has been removed from the list of company covered by your insurance policy. And just like that, you're completely fucked. <laughs> because you realize that this notification has been sent on Thursday, 
and that the shipment date of your cargo is Saturday. For the shipment to be covered by the insurance policy, the notification should have been received after the date of shipment. The insurance policy doesn't cover the entire value of your contract, but only its shipment. So what does it mean? The insurance only enters into action when the ownership of the good changes as per the inco terms involved in the transaction. So usually if you are traders, you are going to sell FOB, SIF and so on. So if you have, I don't know, a three months contract with a buyer and the contract says one shipment per month, he default on the second shipment, but your third shipment is not at sea, but I don't know, somewhere in a pre-shipment phase, this third shipment is not going to be covered by the insurance because it does not meet the changes of ownership as per the inco term. So be really careful with that. It doesn't help you against malicious actors. At the beginning of my career, I was like, I don't care if my customer has a really, really bad reputation. If the credit insurance is going to give me 200K on that company, I will max them out and I will ship for 200K of goods no matter what. And retrospectively, it was extremely dumb. <laughs> Because a clever bad actor can always default on a payment without triggering your credit insurance. I'm not going to give you all the details on how to do it properly because <laughs> be really careful with that. So sometimes the insurance is going to give you, I don't know, 1 million of, on a specific company, but you need 1 million and a half to, to make a deal. So what you could do, and actually what I used to do, <laughs> um, is that I would call the insurance and find the guy in charge of this decision inside um, the company. And then I will try to negotiate with him, not actually negotiate, but I would try to make a case for this company to get a higher limit. And I noticed two things, is like if you ask for a big amount, usually the guy cannot do it. He needs to go in front of a committee, so it's quite tough to do it. But if it's a little amount compared to the size of the company, then you can always use this argument. And I noticed that this argument, it's really powerful and almost always worked. You can say that the company that you want to increase the limit has a perfect track record. And if you can say, and in all honesty, I'm not saying to lie or something like this, huh, that you know that this company had, had had five years without missing a payment, then the insurer could say, okay, so I got a new information. This company has a perfect track record. So I can increase my limit without increasing my risk. Calling the guy to increase the limit is quite powerful because most probably you are going to be the only traders that has this limit on that client. So it gives you a micro edge against uh, your competition. So let me finish this video with a bonus on how you can use your credit insurance against your competition. <laughs> so this technique is extremely high level, extremely niche. It's the game, it's tied a game against other players that play the game, but bear with me. So for instance, if you trade in uh, French speaking Africa, you will notice that there is only three credit insurances that can meaningfully follow you there. It's going to be uh, Euler Hermes, Cofas, and Atradus. So when speaking with your African client, you can just ask something like this. Hey guys, uh, I just want to know, uh, I know that you work with those two other suppliers and uh, do you know which credit insurance they use? Because I'm thinking about changing my to, to get a more coverage on your company. Then if you see that one of your competitors use the same insurance as you, what you need immediately to do is to call your insurance, uh, as I explained earlier, and ask for the maximum amount of coverage on, to, on that African client. Because on the insurance side, they have a definite amount of risk that they can take on one specific company. And they need to slice this amount among all their clients. So think about it. If the insurance has a maximum of 1 million of risk that they can take on one specific company, and that you, because you were like really, really pushy, you got half of that. Then they can only distribute half of this million 
to all the other competitors. So for you as a trader, it means that you are going to be able to sell more to this company than your competitor because you've got a bigger insurance coverage. BAM! That's it for me today. I hope that you learned something. And uh, if you have like any question, just uh, leave a comment uh, below the video. Ciao.